My name is Torsten Orgard. I'm a Danish photographer. I travel the world taking photographs and teaching photography. Today I will talk about how to use pen and paper and notebooks. So one of my great passions, apart from photography, is to write with pen and paper. And it's something I've been wanting to tell you about for a long time, and I'm sure you've been waiting for this for a long time. If you haven't, here it is. Today I will tell about how I use pen and paper and notebooks and how I align it with my digital workflow. So it's one of the passions of mine. My passion is to travel the world and take photographs, but also to write with pen and paper. And of course I also use a lot of computer stuff because I am kind of like a computer geek. But it has been something I've been trying to implement in my life the last four or five years is how to use pen and paper because I love it. And we all probably know this feeling that you walk into an office store and they have folders and paper and scotch tape and you kind of, I don't know, there's something about those things, you just want to have them. So you buy them, you take them home and then how, how do they fit into anything? Uh, it's not that easy. So it's something I've, I've spent uh, quite some time experimenting with in the last four or five years. And I found something that might work for you too. Uh, so I'll tell about that. Um, I will get rid of these first because this is... Uh, I've been wanting to do my own notebooks for a long time. I'll get into here which notebook I use and why I use this so on. Uh, and I haven't really made my own notebooks, but what I did is that I have made, there's a link below the video where you can buy a package of notebooks made in Denmark. They're actually made in my hometown, Aarhus. So it's, there's a, a woman there, she's a librarian, used to be a librarian, now she's uh, working with computer programming. She wanted, she loves pen and paper and notebooks, so she made these and I stumbled over them and said, let's do something. So I would put them here in my video and we did like, we do, there's like a package on the link where you can get a couple of hard covers and then you can get uh, some soft covers. I'll just show you the soft cover here, it's my favorite basically. Uh, so it has like this, you can feel the writing here. The name of the company is the Note Library and that's basically what it repeats here again and again. So it doesn't, there's no secret uh, language in it. Uh, but it's just beautiful to use and I'll get into it later. But one of the things is that it's soft, it's easy to travel with and carry around. Uh, this hardcore one is beautiful. They're not great for travel, in my opinion. It's almost like you cut yourself on them because they're hardcore, but they're nice. So this is Swedish paper made from wood. And actually each time you buy a notebook, trees are planted. So that's a great idea. The canvas here is from Italy. And this yellow marker in the middle here is from Paris. So apparently in Paris is the only place you can get these nice uh, silky things. And then it's made in Denmark. So that's a really great product. And they come in yellow, dark gray, racing green, pink, and a few other colors. And the same with these ones comes in baby blue and here green, Bordeaux, gray, and black, and so on. So go to the link uh, now or later and look at those. And then I'll get into my notebooks and how I, I do with notebooks. And um, you can see I have four notebooks here on the table and this is basically what I travel with. Um, <clears throat> so I have a, a computer bag, I have a, well I have a camera bag when I travel and I also have a computer bag. In a computer bag I have my computer, my charger, extra glasses, passport and all this stuff and I also have a compartment. I have two compartments here, so the other compartment is paper. So I'll have uh, books I'm reading and I'll have notebooks and I have like, uh, I basically have typewriter paper in sheets so I can write on uh, just because I like to do it. So I have space for notebooks and that's how I can travel with four notebooks so they kind of take up this much space in my bag. And why do I have four notebooks? Well that's like my system and that's one of the things I will tell about. So we all have tried to go into a store or somewhere and we find a really beautiful notebook and we buy it and we take it home and yeah, I, I try like every time I get by a moleskin display, I buy a moleskin notebook. And it's these black ones and they're really, somehow they're very nice. So I'll take it home and then maybe don't start using it, but then at some point you want to write in it and you're a little bit uncertain what to write. So maybe you write what to buy in the supermarket or what to do tomorrow or 
maybe you try some poetry or some sketches and there's not really a system in it and that means that you get away from it, it doesn't, it's not like a habit to use it and then you get back to the notebook two weeks or two years later and you look at this and you don't know what to continue from there so you tear out this thing because it's not really relevant for anything. Uh, so I had this problem and uh, the way to solve it is I have different notebooks for different things. And let me just show uh, the notebooks I have here. Uh, we can start with uh, this one and the bottom one. So I will say all these notebooks I have here is uh, Mont Blanc notebooks. And to begin with I didn't actually like the normal, uh, Mont Blanc notebooks. They usually come in blue or orange or yellow or red or something like that in something that looks like leather but is plastic. And it was not very fancy. But actually one day a guy in a Mont Blanc store gave me one and then I fell in love with it because the format is amazing, uh, the paper is great for fountain pen and it's soft, you can, you can, you can tell with it, you know. And it, the size is perfect for having it on a table and write. Uh, it's not too big, it's not too small. And then I found out Mont Blanc actually have, uh, they do limited editions. So here I have the little prints, I have one here with marble, another one with marble here. I'll just, now that we're at it, I'll show some of the ones that uh, I don't use but I bought as gifts uh, or for later use for myself. Here's a new one that you did in velvet, red velvet, that's very sexy. And here's one with uh, a little bee on or something, a little insect, it's also beautiful. This one I will definitely give away because I, you know, I, I like it, but I don't like it for myself, like with gold and black. And here's another marble. The marble is actually really nice, even it's hardcore, that's like, it's okay. Uh, you can get by with it. Um, <coughs> so that's the thing, every time I go by a Mont Blanc store or a Mont Blanc website, I look, do they have any new limited notebooks and then I, I buy them. And that's how I can tell the difference between these notebooks, because if it was black molar skin, I couldn't tell which one is what. And that's also the thing when you put them on the shelf, let's say you had 50 notebooks from you've been using them all your life, then which one is what, uh, you cannot tell. And, uh, and you want to, the things you write in notebooks, you want to be able to access the notes again, so how do you find them? That's, I'll get into that. Um, so here, these notebooks I have here, I, I decided to start with this one. So this one, it has a nice little pen holder here, uh, which is very cute. I also sometimes put paper <laughs> in here, paper notes. So it has a pen holder here and it's actually one that is glued in. I think it's one that Mont Blanc gives away for free. I never paid for them and uh, I get them and I kind of like this concept that the pen sits here, it's nice. But this notebook is one that I use for writing books. So um, when I write a book I'll start with one of the notebooks and then I continue the next one and the next one. And later I will put, uh, I'll put these things into the computer. And writing uh, a book in a notebook is something I started doing because I wanted to see do I write in a different tone or language. Does it change the way that I write? It's going to be more thoughtful if I do it in a notebook. And I can say that I cannot tell a difference if it's written in a notebook or on a computer. So that's not really the point. The point is that, uh, and that's the point with all notebooks, is that this one is not connected to Wi-Fi. There's no emails, there's no pop-ups, there's, no, there's nothing. So I can take this one and I can go down on the street and I can pick any little cafe table that is big enough that my book can be there. I don't like to sit with it in, in my lap. I want to sit on a table and have a coffee cup nearby. And then even if I just decided I, sh I should take my notebook and write something today and I haven't decided what to write, uh, the thing that I'm just sit down and sit with my notebook so I can read the notes I did earlier or the tech things I did earlier and, and rewrite them or something. But what happens is you sit there and you don't have a phone or anything with you and then you get ideas. You get to think of things and then you start writing and it's funny how you can have all this noise around you. I mean Istanbul right now they honk every 10 seconds or something and people run around and there's stuff happening all the time. But you can sit there and you sit in your own little world and you don't take notice of that. You're just in your own universe and that's the beauty of writing by hand on paper that is just and also like I really like this moment you have great coffee and you have sunshine and you have life around you but, it's, but you're in your own world and you hear the pen scratch on the paper and so on, that's beautiful. And one of the secrets, of, it's not a secret, but one of the tricks I have when I write is that I finish writing uh, paragraphs or chapters uh, or whole articles. 
So if I sit and I get a glorious idea, I'm going to write it down and I'm going to finish writing it. Because I've tried too many times in the past where I get an idea for something and I write a few keywords and maybe I do a little sketch and I think that's awesome. Now I'll get back to it. And when I get back to it two hours or two years later, I cannot remember what was the idea. So in that way, writing, uh, no matter, I think no matter what you write or what you do, is like the decisive moment in photography that you walk down the street and you see something and you think, wow, and you take a picture. And you shouldn't think about it, you just take the picture because if you start thinking about why it's a picture or maybe it's not, you're going to lose it because two, two, two seconds later it's gone. And that's the beautiful thing with walking around with a camera, that you get to observe reality. And a little bit of the same happens when you have a notebook, that you get to observe things and you could say even if what you're observing is your own ideas or thoughts you had or things you have been speculating about, suddenly it comes together almost like a composition and you see, oh, this is what, this is what the story is about, this is what I'm going to write about. And I start writing and I work on finishing that chapter. And the interesting thing is that even when you sit and write uh, like this, you, you will get ideas to other things, other chapters. The great thing is you don't get any emails you have to answer, you don't get any pop-ups, you don't start googling flight tickets or anything or, you know, movies and stuff like that. It's just you in a notebook. So it's interesting how you can actually sit and write and formulate, collect the ideas and formulate uh, a chapter or a story or poem or whatever you're doing or drawings. And at the same time, you can actually, with your mind, work on the next thing and shape it. And you can kind of put it in the queue. So when you're done with this chapter, then you take the next one and you finish that one. Uh, it's very interesting. I mean, and then that is one of the things I like with photography and also with writing is that you use your mind, you use your abilities. And uh, a lot of people don't know they have them because they're on a device all the time. And you can say, if you sit with your iPhone all the time, uh, you get all these sponsored COVID messages and you get uh, all kinds of weird things on Instagram and Facebook and pop-ups and this is much how screen time you have and all this stuff. That's not the real world, that's not reality. Reality is what's happening around you and that's what you observe and that's what you reflect on or get inspired by to write. So that's the point of, uh, of having a notebook. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's the book where I write books. And let me just say uh, what, I, what I do when I'm done with this one is that I digitize it. So that means that I will take this or two or three notebooks that is a book and then I'll type them into the computer or in Word. So when I write, I'm not so much concerned about commas and spelling errors and stuff like that. It's something I, I can actually sit and review again. Uh, but later I'll put it into a computer and as I work in chapters and there's no exact sequence in chapters. And you can say chapters is, is a secret to even if you want to write a movie script or a big book, it's still different scenes. So it's kind of chapters or small sections. So you finish one section at a time. And what I do is I put them into the computer. When I, put, when I type everything into the computer, then I print everything out and put it on a big floor so I have all the different chapters and then I change the sequence. And sometimes I say, no, this chapter goes to the next book or it goes to another book or maybe it's an article instead. Uh, but it's these different particles, it's almost like Lego that I can make into something. Um, that's really a, a great way of doing it. And there's an interesting thing that uh, Barack Obama said in his book is that he hand wrote his whole book. He's doing two big books, so he, he, hand, he hand wrote it. And he said, because if you type it into a computer, it looks so perfect. When you look at the Word document, it looks it's done. When you handwrite it, it's different. And that's also, I will go back and, and review my notes and change the word or something and also I'll actually get inspired from stuff I, I wrote previously to get ideas or I should tell more about this or people are going to ask about this so let me do a chapter about this. So that's how I do it. Then I have uh, another notebook here, this is the Little Prince, uh, very beautiful cover and uh, this one is more like what most people use notebooks for, this is random notes. Uh, so here I have, I mean, I have all kinds of stuff. I have a list of videos I'm supposed to do. I have the tax rates, different states in the U.S. Um, numbers, I have some uh, ideas and quotes. I have all kinds of stuff in this one. Um, so, so this one I'm allowed to just, when I want to settle and doodle something or make a list, then I use this one. 
And this one I also digitize when I'm done with it. So that means that I'll go through it and then I said, oh, this one I should, I should digitize, I should put in the computer. Then there's something else here that, no, this one I don't need. It's just, it was just something I was doodling that day. It could be on a tablecloth. Um, sometimes I have uh, drawings and sketches like this one is uh, how to do gallery exhibitions, different sizes of prints and stuff and how to organize and design them. So this one I would actually digitize in the way that I take my iPhone. I have a, uh, an app on it, it's called PDF app. So I can take a picture of this one and the app would actually strain it out so it becomes uh, a sheet and it will make it black and white even if it's here blue and white and red it will make all black and white like an old Xerox machine and it will even scan the text and have uh, word recognition if I turn it on. And these PDFs I save on my computer and put in a title that have keywords or says this is gallery, prints, exhibitions, blah blah blah, something so I can find that note again. And the thing also I do is that when I'm done with digitizing, I'll just take an orange pen here and I'll just make a line across the page so I can see when I go back to this notebook, if I don't throw it out and I put it on a shelf and one day I look at it in 10 years and say, oh, what is this? I can see I already put it in the computer. It's always used, it's always already gone somewhere and everything should go somewhere, you know. You don't not make notes to have them in a notebook. If it's something that can be of use, it should be used in articles or books or somewhere, you know. So this is my random uh, notes here. Then I have uh, another book here and this one is one I use, you could say, for a lot of quotes. So whenever I do a study or I read a book, uh, if I stumble over a good line or a paragraph or even two pages, I'll actually write it in this one. And uh, sometimes I also get ideas as uh, I study something else and that inspires me to something, so I'll write an article or something in this one. Uh, and, and you say, why do I do that? I mean, I could just take the book, I could take a picture of the page, or I could mark it in the, in the page and put, put it back in the bookshelves. But the thing is that sometimes it's just something that is it's gold, so you just want to not just read it, you also want to write it. And then you get to write it again to the computer and you have it as you can search for all the words and it has keywords. Um, so that's something I do and this is what I use this one for. Um, and it, I mean it's very interesting how you have this is the red notebook and it's like this marble and, and this is the one I wrote with red and orange and blue in it and purple. And this is the one I used 2020 to do this thing and until 2021. So I kind of know what this one contains, um, which is part of using pen and paper also, but it's not really essential because once I'm done with typing it into the computer, I'm done with the notebook and I can just, I could throw it out, you know, I'm probably gonna save it somewhere. Then I have my thoughts uh, notebook here. And this is kind of, this is one I followed my four or five years. This is the normal edition of the Mont Blanc. And it even have a pen here, a fine liner. So what I use this one for is my numbers. So in here I have uh, everything that happened on my website and campaigns, economy, everything that happened 2018, like June, July, and it goes on here and I have notes so I can actually find out what happened when and what was good and what was bad. So this is my statistics, this is my numbers, is in this book. Uh, and I look at this from time to time and analyze and I update it like every day or every week uh, and I always have it with me because uh, it, it, this works really well to have in a format. You can go to a cafe, have a coffee and you look at things, okay, so okay, this is how it went in 2017, 2018, let's see what should I do in 2022. If you have to bring a computer, Excel sheets and all this jazz, it's just, no, that's not, this is awesome. Uh, <laughs> and you can make, make more notes. So this is great. Uh, that one I don't actually digitize because it's, it's the final format. It is the notebook. Uh, all the numbers exist digitally also different places and that's where I get them from stuff that is counted and so on. So that's my notebook system and you could say, if we should say anything, then, then the secret is, okay, do one chapter at a time and finish it. Um, and you could say also leave the computer and phone and everything away. Just be you and a notebook for two or three hours or whatever half an hour can also be. You can sit down, just 10 minutes you wait at the dentist's office, you can actually write on your book or something like that. It's great, you know. 
Um, so that's one of the secrets, and the other one is to have different notebooks, f notebooks for different things, because you cannot jam everything into one notebook, it becomes a mess. Um, so whatever you need, like, you know, movie script, uh, songwriting, cooking, recipes, whatever, different notebooks, just have different notebooks. And uh, I'll show also some of the, now I said like the format that works for notebooks, I'll show some other ones that, I mean, I like paper and, <laughs> and pens, I'll talk about my pens in a second, but uh, I also try to find interesting notebooks that maybe I used and maybe not. Here's one on Japanese paper from, I bought in Paris. Uh, Soft cover, very beautiful, uh, very nice paper and everything. Uh, I'll use it for something. Um, and you can say it's very tempting to put a cover on, but I actually don't like it to be hard cover. I like that it's soft like this and it gets bent a little bit, it gets, it, you know, whatever, that's fine. Then I have a small Goyard one here. Uh, and Goyard makes awesome uh, bags and everything and covers and they make hard covers. And I have some of them, but they're not practical because it's hard covers. And this one you can actually get in uh, the same size as uh, the other one is A5 or half a letter size. Uh, and this one is just nice because it's silver and it's very simple, great paper. And I actually had a watermark with uh, the Goyard pattern that you know from the bags. And I actually have for my pens and writing instruments, I have a couple of these uh, Goyard uh, pencil holders. And I just love this uh, pattern. And these are nice, they're very uh, practical and they can like, you know, uh, they hold the stuff really well. And then I have uh, one here I just want to show you. You can't get this one anymore apparently because I was just looking for what can I find of new notebooks one day. And I looked online and I see Salvatore Fargano that had a sale on notebooks. Well, they had notebooks and they also had sale on them, so I got 50% on them. So I bought a stack of them. Uh, this one is not the most sexy of them, this is kind of like black leather looking, but it's not leather. Uh, nice notebook and everything. Uh, and I gave them away as uh, gifts because they all came, <laughs> whenever I ordered two or three notebooks, they came like a box from Italy. Huge box and then I opened it and inside was like two or three of these ones and then I ordered some more and then suddenly they didn't have more, so I, I probably bought the last ones of them. Um, small notebooks like this, you could say they don't really work, but sometimes they do. This one is one I have from 2005 uh, because this is one I brought with me to Sri Lanka and India. So I did this after tsunami project where I traveled around uh, Sri Lanka and India for three weeks and photographed uh, the aftermath of the tsunami back then. And that was film. So here I have the different film rolls. I had it in my side pocket. I to take it up and say, okay, so this is roll 20. It starts shot with like a SL mod, it's 100 ISO. And here I'm like with these people and keywords and the places. Uh, so it have all the film rolls here, how I saw and what camera. So when I got back home and I developed the film rolls, I could put in the proper keywords and names and everything. Uh, so this one I've just kept. Another historic one I have here is a student in my workshop in uh, Bali. He took a photo of me and he made notebooks for me. So I gave him one of them to my mother. And I actually think this is the only one that exists now. And she used it uh, for her notes. And then uh, here, some months ago, I stole it back from her uh, as a little historic uh, document so I can travel around with my mother here. Uh, and there's a paper clip here, maybe she had stacked some money on it also, but uh, yeah. And then I tried uh, bigger ones. This is also the note library. This is the baby blue one. Beautiful with this uh, texture here. Amazing paper and everything, but this one is just too big. It's not, you, you see, you can sit, in, you can sit in a cafe table and then write in this one. It's just a mess. So this one, what I use it for is, uh, I just hold papers here that can get bent. Um, so that's what I use it for while I travel here. And I have one, actually I see here, I have one notebook that <laughs> I, I just couldn't help myself. So I had to buy this one. Uh, because it was so beautiful, and this is big, this is A3 size, but I thought, no, I'm gonna get it because I can just uh, do the projects I wanna do in it. So I had some stuff where I wanted to do uh, big drawings. Uh, you see stuff like this, it needs space, uh, and I could have taken a big sheet of paper, but I just, I had to have this notebook, you know. Um, and here is like a new design of my website menu, so it takes a lot of space and I can take it out again and I can see, okay, I got an idea to do this and I can finally when I do it, I can look at this note. 
This one, uh, I traveled through 12 countries in the last two months and I traveled by car, so I got, it was easy to have this. Now I started flying, so it's too much stuff. So maybe I digitize this one and throw it out and then I have uh, the digital ones and I can print them, print them out and look at them again. So that's kind of my, uh, my notebook uh, history. And uh, it's more or less what I had to say today. I mean, there's a lot of alignment between uh, carrying a camera, always wearing a camera, because that is a notebook. It's like you see something and you take a note, a digital note, and then you edit it later and you put it in the archive. And the same here, you take take notes on paper. And it's a very, uh, it's an amazing thing, like this, this thing that you could say you don't have everything in your head, but you can actually put it on paper and you can sketch out something, especially if you have to do a layout of space or you have something going on at time or you have to compare times and prices and stuff, you know. It's great to just put things on a piece of paper and look at it. And then you can decide it. it and, and so often this making notes or using notebooks is a thought process. It's a process to get from some loose ideas to something that now I see this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, and one of, for example, one of the notes I made in my in one of my notebooks the other day was I was reading about Tesla. So Tesla is the one that the Tesla car is named after, but he's also, or mainly, He's a real person. He's the one that invented the electricity that we use today and wireless technology and everything. He was a super genius. And one of the things I stumbled over in his uh, book that I thought this is applicable for what I do, but also in photography mainly, and that is that, that first you think something through and then you do it in, in the real world. And what he said is that he, had the, he was definitely a genius. He had the ability, you could just sit down and he could invent a machine and he could design the machine in his mind. He could play around with the idea in 3D. He could almost test run the whole machine. And he said, no, it has to change the dimension. It has to change this. Two extra screws here. And when he was done developing this thing and scaling it, he would go in the workshop and build it. So he would never go in the workshop because that's what normal people would do. It's like, oh, I have an idea, I want to do a machine. They go in the workshop and then they start grinding metal and screws and then it doesn't work and then they have to figure out why it doesn't work and, and do a new one. He didn't do that. He invented the whole thing in his head. Uh, and of course, that's an ability. We all have to some larger, smaller degree that you can compose a photograph before you take it and actually make that photo or you can't. And the same thing with uh, ideas and text and notes and drawings is that you can think it out first and then you can draw it or you can write it out uh, or some people they have to write something and then they look at it and then they try to change the words and then that didn't work so they scratch it and then they do the next one again uh, but it's definitely something I think you can train and you can increase that ability there's, there's different tools in the world you can increase the ability to think uh, clearer um, so notebooks is one way to be better at that, to deal with the real world and your own ideas and, and your own everything instead of just getting like stuff from television and screens and, and newspapers and everything, just cut all that stuff out and just take your own blank piece of paper and a pen and then see what happens. So that's all I had to say about that. I think I will just mention my pens here because if you have noticed these, I have quite a few pens and this is usually what I travel with and it's a little bit eccentric and I am maybe a little bit eccentric. So I have uh, fountain pens and I always write with fountain pens and it's not just to be eccentric. I love the look and the feel of them but also you don't have to press that hard when you use a fountain pen so that means you can write for hours without getting tired in your hands. And I love, uh, well I, I like uh, Mont Blanc pens so that's most of them is, I have is Mont Blanc and I like uh, special editions. Uh, so I tend to, whenever I see one that I really like, then I, I'm going to have this one. And it's my little baby, so maybe I have like, I have more than 10 of them, let's just say that. But I use all of them on shift. And my excuse for using them when I travel is that I have different color ink in them. So this one, for example, is purple ink. Uh, this one is also purple ink, so that's what I write mostly with now. It's just a limited edition Beatles ink that I liked and I use until I can't get it anymore, as I would use dark blue ink, and I think that's what is in this one. Then I have also, uh, this one is orange ink, because I like orange, and this one I use for, well, I write, write orange notes also, but else I'll just cross over a page when I've digitized, that's what I use this one for. Uh, and I also have, the one I'm writing a book with, is a UNICEF pen, it's a Mont Blanc UNICEF pen, 
and it has red ink and it's just the whole book is written in red it's just whatever and then i have a funny one here that's actually a gift uh, i got and this is a very funny pen you can see i have the mont blanc finger here and then when you open it you take out the pen here and write and then this one you can just put in the cafe table and and people can look at it uh, it has a very soft uh, nip uh, so this one is it's kind of my favorite uh, right, right now uh, and it looks like a weapon I haven't gotten trouble in the airport yet but I probably will uh, I will say uh, some of these are a little bit over the top this one is a Meister stick this one I had for 25 years uh, I remember I bought it in the Caribbean I even got discount uh, so this one been with me for a long time and it's been with Mont Blanc a few times to get fixed and it needs to go back again because it's falling apart up here I dropped it um, and this is also a Meisterstück. And Meisterstück is actually the ones that you could say normally you get them in black and silver or black and gold. And it's kind of like a plastic thing. It's not plastic, but they're light. The metal ones is heavy and I like heavy pens. All my pens are heavy. Uh, but I will say the Meisterstück is actually, that's the best uh, nip that the way you write, you can write really fast and it doesn't grip the paper and so on. It's, that's, that's like the best one. And I have a, a few, uh, you could say, more ordinary pens. I have lump color. I always use lump color all my life. Uh, they're great to write in plastic with and envelopes and stuff. And they come in different thickness. This is kind of like uh, a thin one. And then I have a new thing. I have ultra thin uh, Japanese pens, like this one that I used to sign my photos because this ink lasts for 100 years or something. So that's good when you sign a photo. But I also use it whenever I need to do something fine line. Um, and then I steal uh, pencils from hotels, not uh, like, uh, you know, like uh, school pencils, you know, if they have the logo on them, I, I take them. I don't use them a lot, but I like to have them in my, uh, in my pencil house. Um, so of course, I mean, yeah, of course I have like, I have something with pens. Uh, but the great thing is I get to use them. I don't, I don't have them just in the pocket. I actually write with them. So that's my excuse uh, if I need any. So that's all I think I have to say today. Um, below the videos, there's a link to a free ebook and you get to receive my uh, news mails with articles and inspiration and photos and so on. And till I see you next time, remember to always wear a camera.